right. They're going to drive all the way back on that bus that broke down on the way here <laughs> so that then they can make it and see if they can make it to the Dominican Republic before we do. We have a greater chance. This is New York City. You know, we're at the JFK. There's plenty of flies that are coming out of here. We will leave before any of them will. So we decided to stay, two of us, wearing that yellow shirt. And then it happens that uh, as we're waiting and waiting, they said, no flies are going out. It getting, it's getting later and later. And now we're rethinking whether we should have gone home or go to family members or not. And we said, let's just wait for the next fly. Let's just wait for the next fly. But no flights are going out. And now we're at the airport. We said, we'll just fly the next day. We decided to stay there, use some of our bags, and just sleep on the floor, get a bench or something, and just the two of us keeping company to each other and saying, you know what? I'm sure the first flight is going to be the flight that we finally get into. And, and get on and, and, and head over. And so it happens that as we're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, the next morning comes, we sleep there, not well, because it's on the floor, it's New York, so we have to be awake, and nothing is working. We have the same shirt because we didn't feel the need to go into the bag and change and do all of that. It's just the two of us. We said, it's all right, let's get something to eat, let's wait for the fly, let's see what happens. As the next day comes, they said, we're going to put you on the waiting list, but we can take your bags. We'll take your bags. We'll make sure that they get into the plane, and then, you know, we'll get you <laughs> to your destination. And as some of you are shaking your heads, you know that that was the worst thing we could have done because now we don't have any bags. I don't remember if we were still wearing the same shirt or not if we decided to finally change, but it's the next day. We were supposed to fly Friday, and almost 12 hours later, now we're on this waiting list. So it happens that we finally get into a plane. We're going to arrive Friday evening or after, late afternoon sometime. But now the churches where we're going to are aware of our situation. It happens that every other pastor that went back six hours made it there, uh, some earlier on Friday, most on Thursday evening, and the two of us were still stuck in New York having to fly uh, on the next day. So it happens that as we get on the plane, we are on our way there, and when we get to our destination, to our surprise, I don't know why we thought this was going to work out, our bags didn't make it. Now, we're supposed to preach that Friday night. We have the same yellow shirt on. I'm pretty sure we still did. And we have no bags. We have nothing. But thankfully, there was a member, an elder of the church, who at least the church where I was going to uh, said, well, you know what? What a coincidence. The Lord gave me a dream last night that this was going to happen. And he also revealed to me that the pastor and I we wear the same size and everything, so it's okay. He could borrow my clothes. He could borrow my suits. He could borrow my ties. He's going to be fine. But then when I get there and I meet the person, I don't know who gave him that dream, and I don't know what happened, but we were absolutely not the same height, not the same weight, and his clothes were not going to work. And so it happens that now I can't preach on Friday night because we're tired, don't have clothes, all these things are happening. We managed to uh, find something for Sabbath morning, tell the story, and then just go on with our journey. By the time we got our bags, I think it was on Sunday or Monday, so I had to wear the same thing, not the yellow shirt. I don't think I've ever worn that shirt ever since, <laughs> but um, I had to find something that I borrowed from the pastor, and we managed to make it through get our bags, go through everything on uh, Monday, and continue with the, with the trip. Now, we had opportunity during that trip, and we were just really thinking like, man, should we be here? This is ridiculous. Look at everything that we're going through. And now we finally get here, and then our bags get lost. And then this guy's talking about he had a dream, and I guess it was the wrong dream. And now we can't do anything, and here we're stuck. We could have complained the whole way through on that trip. 
But instead, because we were there together going through it ourselves, we decided to make light of it, to make the best of the situation, to just laugh about it and say, you know what, this is probably a story, a sermon, or something will come out of this. But right now, it feels ridiculous. Right now, this is just impossible. Everything and anything that can go wrong, and there was so much more that I'm leaving out, but everything that can go wrong is going wrong. But we said, you know what, perhaps there's somebody here in the Dominican Republic who really needs to hear whatever it is that we have prepared to preach. Because all, this thing that, all these things that we're going through, um, I think they will be worth the trouble at the end of this series. And sure enough, the Lord blessed us. It was a, an amazing thing. Every time my friend and I talk about it, we laugh just as, uh, you know, as recent as like two weeks ago, I was texting him about it. I sent him a picture of the shirt because I still have it so that one day I can burn it. <laughs> And, you know, it's just something that we made out of it in spite of all the difficulties. So when we read in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible tells us, do everything without complaining and disputing. Then it says, so that you may become blameless and harmless. Verse six, uh, 15, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast to the word of life, verse 16, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. You know, there's the thing about working for God that sometimes we forget, and that is that we many times forget the point of the matter. We do what we do, but we forget why we do it. You know, we come to church But it's for a reason. It's not just for us to get together and be around people who have and think exactly the way that we do, but it's so that we can grow and learn from each other and also so that we do a work of reaching others that don't know about Christ. A lot of times we forget that the point of everything that we do is so that others will come to know Jesus as we have come to know Jesus and so that we ourselves can learn also more about him so that we can continue to grow in this knowledge of Christ and in our relationship with him. But in order for us to do that, there are things in life that will happen that we need to learn lessons from. You're going to come in contact with individuals that are going to test your patience. You're going to come in contact with things in life that will make you question certain things in life. And then it's in those moments that the Bible tells us, do everything, everything, without complaining and disputing. Now, we know that naturally... We love to complain. Naturally, we just, oh, look at this. It doesn't matter what it is. We have this natural tendency to be and think on negative things. So that's why I told you, you know, I know you're probably looking at the clock and looking at everything that's happening, but just think of something joyous to get out of that. In life, we're told that in every situation, we can find a reason to rejoice. Do we believe that? In every situation, there should be a reason for us to rejoice even in the difficult moments. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, this is what the Bible tells us. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So what is God's will for us? To give what? Thanks in everything. It doesn't say for everything. It says in everything, because there will be situations in our lives that we will not be thankful for. There are things that we're going to go through that we're not going to say, oh, great, my brakes are broken. That's amazing. No, we will never say that. Nobody will say, oh, I have a flat tire. Thank God that I got a flat tire. Nobody will ever do that. However, in those moments, is there something we could be grateful for? In the moment where we're going through some sort of difficulty, is there something that we can be joyous for? Because you see, while you may say, well, I have a flat tire, that's true. You may not be thankful for the flat tire, but you could be thankful for the fact that you actually have a car that can get tires flat because there are others who don't even have shoes. And so you might say, well, my child keeps waking me up at night. Well, guess what? You have a child to do that. One day he won't. One day you're going to try to wake him up and he's going to be like, uh, uh. things are going to change and life happens. But in every situation, 
there's a lesson we can learn. In every situation, we can be thankful for something. Yes, the very thing that may happen may disappoint us, annoy us, make us mad, make us angry. But even in that situation, is there something I can focus on that can say, you know what? I'm alive. You know what? I can feel. You know what? I can taste. You know what? I can experience things in life that at least... You know, I have something to, to, to be grateful for. So in everything, we ought to think of, Lord, what can I learn from this? Now, it could be that things in life happen that we may say, I, I can't learn anything about this. I'm so upset. I'm in so much pain that there's nothing I can learn from this at this moment. But later on in life, then we may remember those things and say, oh, wow, I went through this when I was this age, and now that I'm a little older, here comes this experience, or here comes this person going through this, and I can remind them, I can tell them, hey, I've been there. So perhaps I went through it so that I can show sympathy to someone else who does not believe as I do or who does not have the same faith. And so I went through it so that I can have sympathy. I went through it so that when someone else deals with it, I can comfort them. I went through it so that they... Uh, as if, if I come in contact with someone who is in despair, I can guide them through the emotions and the journey that they go through. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're told this. In Hebrews chapter 12, in regards to Jesus, we're told to do the following. And I think it's a very important uh, passage that helps us to keep certain things in perspective, to uh, keep in mind was really important to keep the point of the matter in our hearts. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, again, verse 1, we're told, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So we set aside whatever it is that can slow us down, but we need to have an endurance to continue, to keep going forward and know that this race is before us, it's in front of us. And then it says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And now the joy that was set before Christ was not just like, hey, Jesus, guess what? After this, you're going to go back to heaven and be the king again, and everything is going to be great. The joy that was set before Jesus was to see people like you and I giving their lives to him, to see the joy of someone accepting him as the Savior and to know that they can overcome whatever it is that the enemy sets before them and the sin of this life they can overcome it only through his help and by his means. So because of the blood of Christ, we have life. Not just regular life, but eternal life. And so Jesus endured the pain of the cross. He endured, it says, the cross, despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. But then it says, consider him, verse 3 who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. You haven't resisted to that point. So consider him. And the thing about consideration is such uh, an amazing thing that consideration helps us to learn and keep in mind, and that is because when we are considerate of Christ, we get to see that whatever it is that we're going through is not quite as difficult or as hard or as, as, as important, perhaps, as what Jesus himself went through. When we consider everything Jesus went through so that you and I can have an opportunity, then that consideration helps us to be more in tune with the reality that this, too, will pass. Whatever it is that we're going through, when we consider Christ... We have to remember, he died so that I may have life. So whatever it is that I'm going through at this moment is temporary. It's not eternal. The only thing that's eternal is the life that he offers us. The only thing that's going to last forever is us with Christ in eternity. Everything else will pass away. Do we know that? Everything else in life will pass away. 
all the pain, the toils, the tears, the pain, all that stuff. Jesus says that one day he will put an end to that so that we can be with him for eternity. Even death will be put away forever so that we can be with him for eternity. So when we consider Christ who endures such hostility, it says that then it helps us not to become wearied or discouraged when we go through stuff. Now, consideration also helps us to be mindful of others. When we consider other people and what they're going through, then it helps us to see things from a different light. You see, my friend and I, as we were going through all these things and all this stuff, at the end of the day, when our trip was over, we would go back home, go back to our normal life, and everything would just continue as smoothly as possible. But there were individuals that perhaps we came along the way that were getting on the plane for the last time in their lives. There were other individuals that perhaps we were sitting next to that by the time the next morning came, they would not be waking up. There were individuals there that we went to minister to that had different toils and difficulties that perhaps we didn't have. So when we consider one another, the Bible tells us that in our consideration for one another, we're able to uplift each other when one needs it. The one that is weak then is comforted or strengthened by the one that is strong so that when I go through my weaknesses, then the one that is strong then helps me as well. And so consideration, mutual consideration, is one of the blessings that God gives us. But first it tells us consider what Christ went through. Consider what Christ went through. Consider what other people go through. A lot of times we're so selfish because we're only thinking of ourselves. We're only thinking of the difficulties that we go through, the inconveniences that other people put us through. So we don't want to make any sacrifices. We look at the rest of the world as they don't deserve this, they don't deserve that, they didn't earn this, they didn't earn that. I work hard, they did not. We look at people from a disadvantaged point of view because we think we are better because we think we deserve more, because we think that we've done the work, we've done this, we've done that, so therefore we earn this, we deserve this. But when we look at Christ, we must recognize that there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world that we've done that puts us in any category that says, hey, you've earned your salvation, you've earned your way to heaven, you've earned your consideration from Christ, you've earned his love, None of that. He loves us even when we were his enemies. And then he calls us to say, live as a child of mine. But I've called you and died for you while we were still sinners, while we were still his enemies. And so whatever we go through, whatever toil, difficulty, we deal with it in the same way that the disciples at first dealt with their issues when they consider it a blessing. It says that they will be in prison, beat up, They'll come together and celebrate and say, count it a joy that we suffer just a little bit like why Christ suffered. How many of us will be prompted to do that? The first slap we get, then we're going to slap somebody back. We want to fight. We want to defend ourselves. We're not going to count that a joy. A oh, joy, you hit me, I'll hit you. That's the way we naturally respond. But the Bible tells us that we ought to consider the sacrifice of Christ, consider the example of those who've come before us, that they too have gone through difficulties, unfairness, and yet they trusted in God. I'll leave you with this one other verse in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 through uh, 18. This is what the Bible says. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 through 18. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cried out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then we are heirs. And if heirs, we are heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. Verse 17. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be what? Glorify together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, verse 18, Romans 8, 18, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see, when we go through difficulties, when we go through life, we have to remember that this world 
is not our home. This world is not our home. Jesus himself said, my kingdom is not of this earth. So a lot of times we get worked up. We get so upset. We get disappointed with things that happen around us. But the Bible reminds us, you're supposed to be disappointed in this world. Unfairness is going to happen. You think it's unfair to you, consider others. You think it's unfair to you, consider what Jesus went through. That was unfair. He didn't deserve any of that. And so we must remember that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus, that we need to keep our mind, our hearts, as it says in Colossians, on the things that are above and not on the things that are on this earth because we belong to Christ and we have sacrificed our lives. We have submitted our lives to him. Therefore, we live to please him. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above and not on the things of this earth. A lot of times when we think of the toils of this life, that's when we have the tendency to complain and to dispute and to argue and to go through all these emotions that we go through because we forget what is the point of the matter. We're here to serve Christ. We're here to serve one another. We're here to be an ambassador of Christ. We're here temporarily. Whatever possession, whatever it is that we have that God has blessed us with has to be used for the blessing of others and not just for our enjoyment. Yes, we get to enjoy in the, 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 you know, the fruits of our labor. Yes, we get to be blessed with those things. But when we consider other people who have way less, who go through so much, who struggle in life, every single day, then perhaps our struggles are not as bad as we think they are. And we can also alleviate those who have less and who are suffering from things that we can partake in or provide and help with or encourage or teach or instruct or whatever it is to help them overcome whatever toils they go through. Because if Christ did it for us, why can't we do it for each other? So the point of the matter is that Christ has done it all and we must surrender to him knowing that our minds, our hearts have to be set on the things above. So as we pray together, let us stand. I pray that you are blessed on the Sabbath in um, that we look for reasons to be thankful. So just, just make it a point this day. Today, just today, you know, even if it's just for the Sabbath, if you want to go to complaining, start complaining after sunset. But at least for the next uh, few hours, think it so that you say, you know what, I'm going to find a reason to th thank God for. I'm going to find a reason to be thankful for. Whatever it is that didn't go my way today for whatever hours this morning, late, whatever, during the service, Lord, help me to be focused. Help me not to complain. Help me not to lose focus from what you've done for me, and consider Christ, consider others, and know the blessing that comes from that. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the wonderful blessings that we have of being with each other. It's such a joy to see some familiar faces. It's such a joy to come together and worship. Help us, Lord, to think on those things and to meditate on the things that you've put in our hearts. Lord, whatever complaining, whatever thing that did not or does not go the way that we expected, whatever disappointment we may have encountered today, this week, help us, Lord, to forget it, at least for the rest of the Sabbath, and help us to enjoy that peace and joy that comes from you, knowing that our lives are everything belongs to you. Whatever difficulties we may go through, Lord, doesn't even compare to the glory that you're promising. It doesn't even compare to what you have prepared for us. So help us to think of those things. Help us to meditate on those things. Help us to set our mind on things that are above and not on things of this earth. So whatever it is, Lord, that we have and must let go of, we willingly do so, knowing that our lives, our hands, our everything are in your hands, and you will keep them secure until you come. You will make us, Lord, overcome whatever it is that this life throws at us as long as we trust in you. Bless this church. Bless each person here. Bless who are watching uh, online, those who are present physically as well, and those who may watch it at another time. 
We ask, Lord, that your blessing would be upon them, that you would draw closer that, to them, you would draw them closer to you, and that they too will make the surrender of their lives to Jesus. May the Holy Spirit guide us, empower us, help us to understand and convict us, Lord, of whatever it is that, that he needs to, so that we can fully surrender to you. Help us, Lord, so that the joy that only you can give may abound fully in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you.